Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to focus on the interview question and answers for the SharePoint framework. But before we move to the video, so here is a short intro. So the first question is what is SPFX? So SPFX or the SharePoint framework is a development model for building customizations and extensions in SharePoint. This SPFX provides a consistent interface and client-side web part that work both modern and classic SharePoint pages. This is uh, something which you as uh, an uh, interviewer should answer like the SPFX web part can work both in the modern and classic SharePoint pages. The SPFX supports open source tooling and development techniques making it flexible for developers. Okay. The second question is how to add an SPFX web part to a full width column? So to answer to this question is there are three steps which we have to follow. The first one is to add an SPFX web part to a full width column. First, we need to make ensure the web part is set to support full width column. How we can check that? So to check that, we need to check if we have the supports full bleed uh, property or a key to true inside a web parts manifest file this is very much important this supports full bleed true is needed to make an spfx web part supportable for the full width column if this is not true or it is not specified then the web part cannot be added, added into the web part uh, into the full width uh, page okay or the full width column the third question is what is gulp so to answer to this question is gulp is a task runner tool this is one of the important words used in spfx development for automating tasks like building bundling and deploying the code the gulp uses a javascript based configuration file called gulpfile.js this is very important file this should be in there in your answer where tasks are defined different tasks are defined what is the main use of gulp so the answer to that is the gulp streamlines the development process by handling repetitive tasks for example building and uh, deploying and all that stuff okay Question number four, what is package.json in SPFX or what is this can be asked in a different way like what is the use of package.json file in the SPFX. So the answer to this question is package.json is a configuration file in SPFX that defines the project's metadata, dependencies and scripts right it used by npm to manage the project's packages and dependencies so the node package manager right the npm uses this file package.json for managing the project's dependencies and whatever package we are using inside our application our spfx project this package.json file also includes the project's version what is the project actual version 1.0 that is the default one a description about the project the, the web part or whatever we are creating who is the author and how a license is applied into that case okay question number five what is the node modules folder and what is its role so this can be asked in a different way like what is node modules so to answer this we can say like the node modules folder contains all the npm packages and dependencies required for the project 
value install dependencies using npm they are stored in this folder this node module folder plays a crucial role in ensuring all the necessary libraries and tools are available for the project to function properly and run as we expect okay so if someone asks you what is node modules we can simply say that is a that holds the necessary libraries and tools which are required to run the project as we expect let's move to the next one the question number six what is a communication site so there, as you as you all are aware there are two type of sites in the sapoint the team site and the communication site so what we can answer in this particular question is a communication site in sapoint is designed for sharing news reports and information with a wide audience it's visually appealing and optimized for content presentation this is crucial to having the answer it is visually appealing and optimized for content presentation communication sites often includes features like rich media announcements articles which makes them easily available for broadcasting the information to the wide range of audience clear question number seven what is the difference between a team site and a communication site this is very general question which has been asked uh, for the sapoint developer role this difference must be known to everyone who is going to work into this sapoint so basically the team site designed for collaboration allowing team members to work together on a project share files and communicate while the communication site mainly focus on broadcasting information to broad audience okay before we move to the next question if you have any other questions related to these these six or seven questions or any other questions which are coming in or if you have any extra questions which you want me to answer please drop a comment into the comment section and uh, i will try to answer them okay let's move to the next one question number eight how to create a team site without microsoft 365 group so this is commonly asked question during the interviews right so by asking this question the interviewer wants to know how what you know about the team site and microsoft 365 group so to answer this we can say to create a team site without a Microsoft 365 group, we can use SharePoint Admin Center to create a classic SharePoint site or use the SharePoint API. It's not directly available. You have to go to the classic SharePoint site or you can use the SharePoint REST APIs. These options of without the Microsoft 365 group is something which we want to generally avoid. Okay. But it is required because it's required for services like teams or planner if you want to use a teams or planner for our site we have to have microsoft 365 group but if someone asks you how we can do that we can answer like answer in this way like we can go with the classic sapoint site and use the sapoint range apis to perform this section okay question number nine how can i make an spfx app available to only a few or selected site collections okay so why this question is being asked the, the interviewer wants to know if you are having any idea how the deployment is work how the deployment work in the in the sapoint or in the sapoint sites and if you are aware about the different type of uh, deployment processes like if you want to deploy to the tenant level or the site collection level okay so to answer this we can say to make an spfx application available to specific site collection we can deploy the app to the app catalog and then manually add it to the desired site collection okay and 
if you want to make it available to the tenant what we can do is we can control the availability by only adding the app to the site collection where it is needed there is one more thing to answer in this there is one checkbox available when we deploy our application into the sites app catalog or sorry tenant app catalog and if we uncheck that part it will not available yeah, if, we, if we check that part it is available to the all site collections by default and add it but if you want to make it available to the only some site collections we can have this in this way as i just said okay question number 10 is it possible to add an apply button on the proper panel okay in this question the, the interviewer hasn't provide details about is this going to be a custom button or is it something out of the box but to answer this we can consider he is not asking for any custom buttons but he wants to add the out of the box button to uh, a, a very simple answer to this question is yes it is possible to add an apply button to the property panel of an SPFX web part what we have to do is we have to write a method of disable reactive property changes and make it return true something like this <laughs> so once we do that our property pane will have an apply button and whatever changes we make inside of a property panels properties it is not going to be directly reflective onto the web part but we have to click that apply button so that it is being reflected onto the web part okay clear let's move to the next one is it possible to hide so property panel controls so the answer is yes you can conditionally hide or show property panel controls in spfx based on certain conditions or state this can be achieved by using the on property pane field change method and updating the visibility of control directly so let's say we want to hide a drop down based on selection of a toggle button so we can check in this on property pane field change uh, method about the toggle buttons state like it's active or, or not deactivated or activated and according to that we can add a condition with the state for that drop down and it should work let's move to the next one question number 12 can we deploy the spfx on a specific site collection not on the tenant level okay so this is something which we already discussed i am just adding it here for your reference so the answer to this question is yes we can deploy an spfx solution to a specific site collection by using the site collection app catalog so this will allow the solution to be only and only available to that particular site collection within that site collection and not across the entire ten. so the answer to the question those keywords which we want to give is the site collection app catalog and it's not across available across the entire ten. okay question number 13 can we change the component name once it was created okay so to answer to this once the spfx component is created changing its name involves updating the reference in the code configuration files and manifest files we can do that it's not like we cannot update the component name but it's something we have to do for at multiple places and it also requires careful attendance attention to avoid breaking changes so if you want to rename something let's say our component we have to make sure we make changes at each and every place where that component is being referenced in the configuration file or in the manifest files as well okay the question number 14 how can we change the default icon of a component so every spfx web part or app part has a default icon if you want to change it we can do that by using office fabric icon company property and which is available inside a manifest file so to answer this we can say like to change the default icon of an spfx component 
we need to update the office fabric icon font name property in the web parts manifest file this property specifies the icon we use the office ui fabric icons library it's, it's available from the office fabric ui icons library if you want to update it we have to update this particular property in the manifest file the question number 15 and last one for this particular video is what is the role of the constructor in the class the question is very very important it's a basic one but it's important to know what do you understand about the structure of spfx component so to answer this we can say the constructor of a class is used to initialize the component that is first thing the second thing is it sets up the initial state and binds methods can also be used to set up dependencies so the state's initialization is being happened inside that and the constructor is called when an instance of the class is created so it will be called whenever the class instance is being created for that particular component so these are the three main use of constructor okay thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe for more content hit the bell icon so you never miss an update see you in the next video